Jen? Yeah, clean the thumbprints off. <laughs> we are going to split two and two groups, right? So we, we do need to kind of split somewhat evenly. So what we're going to do is we're going to drive to the Rick House first. And if y'all are cool with it, could we take like the front half of the bus? Um, and I know that y'all may have groups or folks that you want to stay with, so I'm, um, you know, there's not going to be any like long goodbyes here today. So, uh, so if you want to stay with your group, stay with your group. But uh, like I said, we're going to roughly kind of do front half of the bus and back half of the bus. All my cool kids on the back half of the bus back there. Yeah, there you go, there you go. You'll be sticking with me, all right. So uh, um, once we depart uh, at uh, Warehouse F, we'll continue down to uh, to, to the Fred B. Noah Distillery. Does that all sound good? Yeah. All right, my friends. Let's get there. Let's do it. No, my name is Frank. Happy to have y'all here. Y'all be with Justin in about 30 minutes. Uh, we're going to come over here to Warehouse uh, F. I was about to say K. We do selections in K, but we sometimes do them in F. Well, you see these two rick houses over here. You got D and E. See, they got racers on the sides. Mm -hmm. And those are old, old rick houses. This was built in the 30s. This one over here was built in the 40s. So you got these bracers on the sides because they're starting to lean and. Uh, well, when big gush of wind comes in, they could just go over, right? Yeah. This one's still green. It's still safe to go in, so nice. we're okay. Uh, interesting thing on this one, being nine stories high, they don't build them this high anymore. So most people probably never been in a nine story high Rick House. When you came in through the road, they were seven stories high. So a Rick House at this size holds about a little under 20,000 barrels. Ones by the road you would have seen that are seven stories high, closer to 60,000 barrels, right? These right here, traditional elevator Rick Houses. Not that you can see any of the other ones. We have all different types here. So you got your elevator rick houses. They can go up and down on the elevator. You have escalator rick houses. Have you ever seen an escalator rick house? Nope. Basically, think of if you look around the kitchen table. When we come out on this ramp, you'll see like a white building on the back side. The doors open like this. There's not many layers. You just walk straight in the middle aisle. You got barrels on the right and the left of you. They're 12 barrel lengths high, and there's a machine that gets barrels up and down. Right, and then you get palletized rick houses. Anyone ever seen a palletized rick house? Right, they're upright, nine on a pallet, six pallets high. Right, not really good for airflow. So we have a few of those, but we prefer the dunnage style that we have over here. So we're going to old rick house. We're talking a little bit about maturation. You're gonna see the temperature difference from when you're standing in the sun to we go into the rick house. That gush of wind's gonna hit you. You're probably gonna get some whiskey smells. That's that angel share that's going all around us. So fun little fact, you got 104 of these in the state of Kentucky. All right, because we have three other sites that you don't know, or two other sites you don't know about. We've got one in Boston, Kentucky, just down the road, does full-on production. have another site, Frankfort, Kentucky, as well. All right, so all together, there's about 104 rick houses. I have about 3.3 million, uh, 3.2 million barrels resting right now. You do the math with us and makers alone in 2023, we produced a third of the world's bourbon. So, uh, you know, we're big. <laughs> anyway, you'll follow me. We're, Feel free to ask questions, <laughs> take left. pictures. I mean, I'm being humble about it. You're number one. You're number one. Yeah. That's right. Let everyone else come after you. Good but, uh, to be in. No, right. feel free to ask questions, <laughs> take photos. Please don't light up a cigarette or uh, the e cig, whatever the you know people the vape, whatever that is. Yeah. Don't do that. I don't know. My day, you just smoked a cigarette or you dip real tobacco. You don't do the fake tobacco. You do the real right. tobacco. Yeah. You know, but I don't know, different times. Uh, yeah, because, uh, you know, fire and alcohol don't go well together. Please don't play in the ricks, but uh, we're going to go in and go and get you a pour, so y'all follow me. Get us a pour. Good. Oh, good. Ooh, the famous Wissy F. We're in the, the Wissy F. So we got a water station here as you come in, just go on and grab a glass. That glass is going to be yours to keep. Yep, come on in. If you want, like water, feel free to have a quick little sip, but make sure you grab yourself a glass. Otherwise, 
I guess you're gonna drink out of your palm. That's an expensive hammer. Man. This one, <laughs> the almighty knocker. Yeah, this one's. This one's actually in pretty good condition. Right, the other one's got all these hair lines. I think it's because when they used to build these, nice they used to go the other way. So you know, when you're hitting here now, you're hitting with the grains. So it just splits. But in the olden days, it was just kind of like a square four by four that you would hit like so. So you weren't hitting with the grains. I don't think it split as much. But we go through a. We threw about five or six bung knockers every six months. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good turn. Did everybody get a get a glass? You have cups over here. If you want water? There are glasses on the table. If you don't get a glass, I just can't give you bourbon. But if you want a glass, by all means, all good. All good. So you already have four roses. I'm getting. Did they just give you like a tour? Yeah. We no, we went through the bottling. And okay, the cool. House. We did steaming out of barrels and stuff. Okay, cool. Well, here we're talking a little bit about maturation. I think it's always good, you know, like when you get to see other facilities or whatnot. Uh, when I switch with Justin, I'll take you down to the Innovative Still House, and you'll kind of see how the process is made, even though we're on shutdown down there. But feel free to take videos or photos. Uh, if you've never been to a distillery before, you I mean it's kind of the same process. Grains come in, get cooked, or get milled, get cooked, then basically rot, add some yeast, then we separate the grains and the alcohol, do it again. And you get basically this liquid, it's just clear liquid, it's distillate, it's alcohol, then it goes into a barrel, right? We control pretty much all of that function, right, in terms of the making stuff. This is where Mother Nature comes in. This is maturation. In my opinion, this is really where bourbon's made, right? Alcohol's made on a still, bourbon's made in a rickhouse. Mainly because there's so many variables that, constantly, that come together in here that we just can't control. It's a really, really cool process. Uh, and there's just so many things that we're still learning. Uh, even go back to the 100 years, we're still, still doing some of those techniques, but... Uh, you know, we, we never really questioned why they do it until now, and we tell out, oh, no, they're pretty right on that. Uh, you know, fun thing here, like I said, we have about 3.2 million barrels resting. We have some milestone barrels over here. But when I talk about maturation in a rickhouse, this is where Mother Nature kind of does its thing, right? So right here, we have a Jim Beam black barrel. All right, in a second, we're going to open it up, and we're going to thief out, everyone taste it. And we're going to kind of talk about where Jim Beam sits, and we'll talk a little bit about single barrel, talk about batching, talk about how we do maturation in here. So uh, on the earlier tour, a gentleman asked, is like, hey, what's like the mash bills y'all are running? I, I forget some people don't know this about us, but Jim Beam, Knob Creek, Booker's, Baker's, same recipe, same mash bills, different distillation proofs, right? Old Granddad, Basil Hayden, same mash bill, same, just different distillation proofs. When it comes here, things sit on different floors. That's a whole nother part of the process of what your end result is gonna be, right? Is uh, anybody not from Kentucky? Okay. Is anyone outside of like the Midwest? Is anyone from like South, West Coast, Northeast? Florida. Okay, yeah. But I, we had some folks from like Indiana, right? Anyone else from like Ohio, Michigan. Illinois, Michigan? Michigan. Yeah. Right. So like people from there, you kind of understand the weather. <laughs> Kentucky is very centralized. When I moved up here, I didn't realize that. Like I thought I was leaving the heat and the humidity. I didn't realize how just as humid as it's here during the summers. Right, so you have really hot and humid summers, you have really dry, cold winters, right? But then fall and spring, for you people that live around this region, you understand you can get all four seasons, sometimes in one day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the one I always love, you know, is when I came up here, they're like, you know, it snowed on Derby. It snowed on Derby. Well, yeah, it did. It snowed like that morning, and then by the race time, it was like 78 degrees, mm -hmm. right? That, that's a big swing from going, you know, from below freezing to, Hey, I gotta put on shorts and t-shirt my seniors are pursuit, right? It's awful for your sinuses, it's god awful for your wardrobe, right? But it does amazing, amazing things for maturation in your bourbon. When you're talking about bourbon, bourbon matures very quickly because of that, right? If you think about bourbons, that kid in like the sixth or seventh grade started shaving twice a day, right? Just, it, it is because those extremes makes that distillate mature so much faster compared to like Scotch or Irish whiskey. Has anyone ever been to Scotland or Ireland? I mean, it's usually pretty cold, pretty wet, never gets above about 75 degrees. Right? They use Celsius. Can't do the conversion here, so we'll just say 75 degrees. Yeah. Right? But that part basically you know, makes the whiskey maturation process much slower. And it's kind of dormant throughout parts of the year because it never really gets hot enough to get deep into the wood staves. So if you think about like, Irish whiskey or scotch or somewhere in a different climate like that, it's really like that kid who picked up the razor at 25 and started shaving for the first time. It's just a much slower process, right? So it's not good or bad, it's just different. So with bourbon, you know, you get something that's 8 to 12 years, and it's really, in some ways, depending how they age it, it's kind of plateaued. That's kind of like the key spot where, you know, someone like a Booker know would want it. Uh, now, we do barrels. At this site here, we do about 1,100 um, in the big house still. We can do about 50 in the innovative still. They get filled up, they'll come here to a rick house. Depending on what it is, they can sit for four years, eight years, 15 years, 12 years, 10 years, however long we want it to. Uh, the Barstown release that just came out yesterday, I don't know if anyone 
follow that. Sorry, that was very limited liquid, but that was like 20 year old liquid. Most of our stuff's really, you know, between about eight and 15. We do have some older stuff, but really that's kind of where we think the sweet spot is, the maturation, but uh, enough of me talking you're here to drink. So is he only celebrating a birthday or? Uh, anniversary. anniversary. Who's the anniversary? anniversary? Step on up. Oh, no. okay. Anniversary of what? Be married? Oh, that's second group. group. Oh, second group. Oh. That's a it's, shame. We brought him here for his birthday. Oh, Fair enough. Yeah. How are you feeling, my friend? You feeling lucky? Uh, yes. All right. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Blessed, maybe. Okay. Hey, right. At the moment. So, you ever played one of these before? No. All right. It's a bung knocker. All right. So with that bung knocker, you're going to be on the bung stave here. You notice the hoops are kind of not really even. So what you want to do is you want to take that knocker. You want to hit, if you're feeling lucky, here in here, or if you're not feeling lucky, here and here. This could take three to six hits. It just depends. If it takes more, that's okay. I don't know how hard I drilled it in. Just don't hit that, Okay. and you're not going to hurt this barrel. Uh, you, you, you sure? You, you, I, okay. you, you ever seen The Patriot? No. It's no Gibson? Have you ever seen that yet? Yeah. Yeah. I have. Yeah, when he's oh, yeah. the record, ah, yeah, that's essentially what you're doing here. You just you just beat the heck out of this, this okay. little area right here. Everybody else, watch out. There you go. Harder. 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 There you go. Keep, oh, keep going. It's moving. Boom. Oh, wow. yeah. Got it. I'm gonna put my hand down. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's give a round of applause. Hey. 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 Real solid. Thank you. That's Point awesome. though, right? And yes, that's how it runs for mom, kids. Yeah. So here's what we do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fill up this thief, and then if you just hold your glass out, I'm gonna get around to you. There may be a little char in here. Oh, no. Char. Char's not going to hurt you. They say it's good for your teeth. That's good for your teeth, yeah. I brought a little bit more. So Jim Beam Black, right? We just relaunched this. Has anyone seen the new packaging for it? Yeah. Yes. So what does it look like? It's black. Okay, what does it say on the label? Seven. Seven. All right, so we went extra age. Now we have a seven-year age statement. And what we do proof-wise? Went up. Went up to what? 90. 90. That's right. That's right. So we just right here. So we talk about batching, right? So let's say Jim Beam. We make Jim Beam. It's going to come off that still at 135 proof. It goes in the barrel at 125. All right? Yeah. Then it's going to sit. And we put Jim Beam all throughout a rickhouse. All right? So it's going to sit top, middle, bottom. Right, all throughout. When we're batching it, we're going to take barrels all throughout it. We're essentially doing a cross section pull. So, what I mean by that is if you were to cut this Rick House in two and look at basically the exterior, let me get you a little more. You know, and you looked away, basically, you're going to see a big X is how we're pulling barrels. Right? And something like Jim Bean White or Jim Bean Black, we're going to take probably about 1,400 to 1,600 barrels, dump them together, and make you a batch of Jim Bean. Right? So, let's actually talk about maturation. If I put a barrel on the top floor, it's going to be a lot hotter up there. It's not going to be nearly as humid. So, what's that going to do to my distillate? Oh, come on. Y'all have been drinking all day. Y'all are smart people. What happens? <laughs> all right, science class. I guess I'll tell you what happens. That's right. That's right. I'm, so, my full barrel here holds 53 gallons. When I put it on the top floor, it's going to start to evaporate liquid, but when it goes away in liquid, I go up in proof, right? Middle is kind of your sweet spot. No, sorry, what you're drinking right now is probably about, it's cast drink, so this is probably about 112 to 116 proof. Yeah, the best bourbon you're going to get is when it's right out of the barrel. What's your entry proof? Entry proof is 125. It comes off the still at 135, goes in the barrel at 125. What's the entry proof on Booker's? Booker's is 125. Okay. I got some. Everybody got some? They're all good questions. All right. So, all right. So, Jim Beam said top, middle, and bottom. We're going to take those barrels. We're basically do cross section pulling. Right? Top, not going to yield as much. But when you look at the color, it's going to be really, really dark, right? It's going to be high in proof. The middle, kind of go up in proof, down in proof. It's kind of pretty consistent. Right? So that's where you, you need the middle for. The bottom, I'm going to have the reverse effect as the top. The bottom, I'm going to keep my yield, but what's the downside? Lower proof. Exactly. My proof's going to start to drop. Right? So when you look at Jim Bean, you're taking all these barrels. The bottom needs the top for color and for proof. The top needs the bottom for yield. They both need the middle to bring together consistency and flavor. Do you rotate them? We don't. That's a really good question. Booker, Booker no, Jim Bean's grandson was the Nobody first to kind of... Nobody rotates No. That's... We got one. We got a sister county still rotates them. So I just let y'all know, like, I mean, like Maker's Mark, I, I, they, they, they pride themselves on rotating. It makes sense, but they have a lot in inventory. 
They don't have it. They really don't have that much in like production to be able to keep rotating for what they're producing. We have 3.2 million barrels resting. I, I, it's just not <laughs> yeah. possible. Now I will say on the flip side, the cool thing about bourbon is, is like art. Everybody you know uses a different paintbrush to get a different result. Mobile right? Rick House, possibly. Say what? Maybe a mobile Rick House. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. More innovative. Yeah, I guess we. You we can trust Brown. Yeah, I mean, I. Facebook I, Marketplace. Yeah, I mean, I, I would just say, like, in, in terms of that, that, like, we found that, like, we lose more yield when we rotate. Mm -hmm. So, like, when we put something on, it just sits. Now, like, the downside is, you like, you see the barrel tag right there. That's your RFID tag. That's essentially a social security number for a barrel. So, let's say I need that middle barrel right there. They gotta roll all these out just to get that one right. and then put them back. So they, yeah, that's not the most consistent. I think it kind of seems that way, but luckily, like you know, that's only for like. Well, how often would they come for like one barrel rather than taking the whole row at a time? It depends. So it, de it, no, it, it depends. Yeah, yeah, like in terms of in terms of production standpoint, they do like to keep it where it's all like, usually the same lot. Code. Yeah. The problem is maybe that's Jim Bean. The rest of this is Knob Creek, and they gotta move it. They gotta get that one barrel or. When they test barrels every so often, usually it's, they're not doing every single barrel. They're doing the ones from the same lot. They found contaminants of high amounts of geosmin in there, and they said, "Hey, like we got to get like those four barrels at the end out." <laughs> Does it happen all the time? No, but yeah, as my boss here in our department, a lot of times lately we've been um, had an issue where we could do single barrels. They've been moving six barrels at a time to different rick houses just by our request. Now we have to make up for that and help those people in production with. You know, donuts or, cheese <laughs> or something. Yeah, right. but but no, I mean it's Overtime. like you know, moving barrels. Yeah, moving barrels isn't always, always that fun. But yeah, I mean that does happen. It's just we just don't rotate, right? So you get that Jim Beam. That's where you're going at. Now, we, in a second, we're talking a little about Knob Creek and Basil. I will I will just touch on points you brought up. Bookers, Bookers and Bakers are center cut bourbons. All right, so Jim Beam would be in pretty much every Rick House all throughout, top, middle, bottom. Right, Bookers and Bakers are center cut. So they mean usually in the dead center. Usually four four in a nine story, they can get up to seven. But usually they'll be, you know, below that in the seven story eyes. And the whole purpose of that is Booker thought the best barrels really sat in the middle. It was the best of you know, both worlds. It didn't get too hot, didn't get too humid. It's just kind of what it was. The problem with that is, for you as a consumer, is that means there's not as much room. Mm -hmm. So it means a little bit less liquid that you can produce out of it. But, you know, that's just the trade off. Now, full barrel holds 53 gallons. You know, you lose about 10% your first year, about 5 to 6% every year after that. Right, so when you're kind of looking at that, something that's eight years old or nine years old, you still have a little bit more than half the barrel. But when you look at bourbon, if you're really trying to age something for a long time, you kind of have to put it on the bottom floor. Right, you put it on the top floor, it's, it's, it's going to dry out really, really quick. Right, any questions on that before we pop it over to Nob? Yeah, you got a question? Yeah, for the old grain down the basil, hey, what's the barrel entry proof difference? Uh, okay, man. We got, <laughs> how many are time, how many are bourbon writers? Anyone? No? Okay, just bourbon enthusiasts. Very good. So basil aid and old granddad, same mash bill, different distillation proof. So it's really interesting. Let's say we're making basil. Basil's distillation proof is 110 on the first still, 120 on the second run. What's interesting about that though? Right? Because legally to be bourbon, I can't come up with a still higher than 160. I can't go with the barrel higher than 125. I could put basil in the barrel at 120. I don't. I couldn't at 115. Old granddad is 125, 135, and he goes in the barrel at 120. So there's a fair amount of dilution that goes into old granddad. That's a pretty solid question. What else you got? That was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. I don't really get asked that that often. That was pretty good. All right. The, I don't know. Let's yeah, just do safe. That no, that was solid. Yeah. That was solid. That was very good. Let's just go ahead and just do beam armor at it. Beam, uh, all right, so you're looking at distillation proofs for beam, right? Beam's going to be 125 proof and 135 proof. We go from making Jim Beam turn to Knob Creek or Booker's or Baker's in about five minutes, right? So you change the temperature of the still. When you change the temperature of the still, you affect proof, right? So distill, Latin, to strip, right? You're pulling flavor out. With whiskey, you want that green flavor in. Once you're over 190 proof, what we got? Vodka. Vodka. Neutral spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody remember the days before COVID? Go get some Everclear 151, trash can or a clean bathtub, dump it in, some Hawaiian punch, 7 up, bunch of fruit. Yeah. It never happened. Sounds like college. college. No, 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 it never no, 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 no. We just call it PJ. You know what used to make PJ? All right. Yeah. The reason you use yeah. it like Everclear is punch. Yeah, hey, the Buffalo. reason you use it like Everclear or vodka is there's no flavor into it, right? You stripped all the flavor out. Whiskey, you want that flavor, right? So with bourbon, are we in a rush? Yeah. What, what time is it? Four. Oh gosh! All right, I'll follow me over here. Yeah, yeah, but with bourbon, this is kind Keep of bourbon. Keep him honest. Most people are going to still higher than about one forty. Higher up on going proof. Yeah, I want to see it all. What's that green flavor get? Let's flavor I have. 
Right? So, I mean, that's I'm gonna sneak. Not, not everybody does distillation proof differences. Just for time's sake, I'm gonna pop this open one because hit. Yeah, one hit. I don't know. I put this one pretty hard. Oh! Ooh. Very good. All right. So y'all just tried a large batch. Now we're right doing is a single barrel. So this right here is Knob Creek single barrel. This is gonna be a little bit higher proof than what you just had. This is gonna get proofed down to 120. Right now, you're drinking it. This is probably about 127, 128. Yeah, buddy. How long does that go to waste? So, single barrel is always middle of nine years. If you look at the barrel head, this would have been filled in November of, I believe, 2014. So, about nine and some change. I don't do the 15. Uh, 15's come back, but this is single barrel, so like with Knob Creek batching, they'll do like the 15, the 12, the 18, maybe the 20 something. Same for all of them? Uh, alright, so Jim Beam yeast, we captured yeast strain at the end of Prohibition. Yeast strain is the same except for Basil Hayden and Old Grandad. We acquired Old Grandad in 87, we kept that yeast strain, and we kept that with Basil. So do you both do have your um, proprietary yeast for both of them? Well, so we actually, the, the building you're about to go in, the FBN, you're going to walk by the yeast propagation lab. But you still using the stuff on actual stills from old granddad. Well, so we, so like so old granddad, we we like that is one like we essentially acquired, yeah. and we make that one. But like Jim Beam yeast, like we've had that since the end of prohibition. Okay. Like Jim Beam captured that. So you still using? We've been using that same yeast strain for about a hundred years. And the uh, one for old granddad and basil is just something you created. So what now? The one for um, old granddad and basil is just something you created. No, that was essentially oh. bought. Sorry about that. That was essentially sure. bought after we acquired National right. Distiller. Oh, so so. Distiller. What level was this at? Alright, very good. So everybody who needs some? Y'all need some? Cool. Uh, Alright, so let's talk about single barrel. So now Creek and Basil Aiden, second floor to second highest floor. It never sits on the bottom, never sits on the top. And that's true for the 15 or whatever. Yeah, so Knob's always going to sit, and Basil will sit, second floor, second highest floor, second second floor. But single barrel's really got to be mid-floor and above. Right? I mean, reason for that is because high proof, right? Right, you're drinking right now, it's got to get cut down to 120. If I have anything else, it's already going to be, you know, below 120. Who gets the top tiers? Just top tiers are going to be Jim Beam. Who did not get any boots? Everybody's got some? Yeah. And does um, Old Granddad and Basil, do they both get the they kind of, too? Uh, they kind of sit all over as well. <laughs> but yeah, pretty much everyone's going to cross section as well. Cool. Everybody got some single barrel? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Now, single barrel makes up less than 1% of what we actually do. Now, like batching, you can take large numbers of batches, or even like six to eight hundred barrels would be small batching, dump them together. Single barrels would be one barrel. So, if you drink this, this can't be replicated. Technically, this would go to an account. You took the label off, so it's not going to go to an account. I'll just stay here. But, anyway, how am I doing on time? We. You're good. Oh, I got two minutes. <laughs> I didn't realize it, it went so fast. I guess I talked too much. But, no, all very good questions. Do you want to have any other questions about products or in terms of maturation? Oh. Yes. Barrels from the different locations get mingled together, or yes, sir. So, like you see this uh, this diagram right here, your warehouse. Let's say I'm doing Jim Beam. What I'm doing, Jim Beam, still up top, all throughout here and on the bottom. What I'm doing, I mean cross section pulling. I'll probably take that barrel, that barrel, that barrel, that barrel, that barrel, that barrel, like that barrel, that, and then on the flip side, that barrel. That what is the so-called center cut? Where so center cut would comes. be right here. Usually floors, depending on size of a rick house, we usually upper three to six. Now. In a seven story, it's going to be really four and five, three, four, and five. And that's you, where most of Booker's come Booker's from. always sits in the center cut of a rickhouse. If you ever get the box of Booker's, you can flip open and look at the card. It'll usually tell you exactly where it came from. But it is, we're taking all those barrels and dumping them together. I actually meant the sites. Like, like, oh, like oh, for, like, uh, uh, no, oh, well, so like, I mean, like, here we have dumping, so like, I mean, yeah, here it's coming from Claremont, yeah, but, bring them here, but Boston also doesn't have bottling, so they'll dump them in Boston and they'll bring that here. Yeah. But it, it, ultimately, it really doesn't matter because, like, when you're dumping that much liquid together, like, it takes on its own, like, unified flavor opposed to single barrel. The reason people like single barrels is because they're like unicorns, right? You have off notes, can't be replicated. When you start to batch, it, I could take a thousand barrels, I could take, you know, 800 barrels. When you start to batch them together, they really just mingle together as a one. The Hardens Creek? Where are you? Depends on which one. If you're looking at like uh, last year, that would have been from sites from we we took 17 year old liquid from here, 
Frankfurt and Boston, and that way you could actually taste maturation differences yeah, but throughout. Where, where in the, the house? Hardest Creek is really, it depends on which one you're thinking about. The one y'all had, profile? yeah, well, the one y'all had would have been basically probably an older age Jim Beam. So, so what, like, about the, what about the uh, Jacob's Well? Jacob's Well is a blend of traditional bourbon and a high rye bourbon. Mm. That's really like an older age Jim Beam and older age older age. So what about bright barrels? What are you doing with that product? Wait, with what? The upright barrel. He said summer. Oh, summer. Those, uh, that's experimental stuff. Oh. So I, I mean, we'll, we'll pop out in a second. The theory was, the idea was it was a way to store whiskey, but airflow is not really good like it is in here. Like, I mean, it's just constant. It's just Mother Nature. So it always feels pretty good in here, um, especially when it's really cold. It gets cold in here, too. But uh, the idea with upright barrels is airflow wasn't as great. It kind of uh, makes uh, maturation stagnant, kind of stops it. The idea would maybe be is age something in this rick house, then put it in a palletized rick house, slows down aging, but then I can sell you something that's 25 years old, but then still has the flavor profile of something that's 8 to 12 years old, because, you know, once you get to a certain point in bourbon, you lose the vandalins, the caramel, the grain, and then the char and the oak go up. Depending what you like, right? Here's the thing, if you're drinking bourbon, you want a sweet whiskey, right? If you're drinking scotch, drink something that's earthy. You want heartburn and indigestion like I do, you drink rye whiskey. So, yeah. but so I saw a bunch of those are char one. So I know a lot of the industry is moving to char one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I tell you what. I work with independent state. And and we'll, we'll mosey out and we'll talk. So, <laughs> Get people out of here. And then he asked the question. Uh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, break him, Ryan. Uh, I think it's a... Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you want to get it? Do it. Do it again. Turn it on. Yep. That's a good way to clear out a crowd. We want to talk about char one. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we just heard, we just heard him talking about that. Work it. Work it. <laughs> Then <laughs> 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 they let us back out in the light. Here's the thing. This is the level three or level level four, right? No one's ever really done the science on this. I don't think most people understand. Y'all are enthusiasts, you love bourbon. We haven't even hit the top of it yet. There's so much stuff no one who's even been in the business for as long as we have still know all the answers, right? There are things that we were still testing the last 10 years that we've been doing for like 80 years, but no one ever questioned why. It was always like, well, that's just the way we did it before so-and-so, right? We've come back to find out, oh, well, that actually was a good idea, but no one ever questioned it. When you look at level one char, a level four puts a really thick band on your stave. A lot of people thought, oh, that rushes the wood sugars up. Wood sugars do rush up, but when you burn something, you scorch it, you've neutralized it. You've then made a really, really thick line for that distillate to penetrate through and get to the wood. The level one char, the idea is it's a thinner level barrier that distillate can penetrate through the wood and get extract more wood bandolins at a faster rate. So instead of having to wait, you know, 10 to 15 years to get certain notes, now, depending on where you put it in a rick house, maybe you only have to wait four to six years. Doesn't mean you're aging it faster, it just means you're getting a different profile at a faster rate. That's all. So you're welcome. No, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all follow me. That's, that's why 60, that was a good answer. That's why 60% yeah. of our barrels are char one. All right. All right. Hold on, George Bush Senior. We go a thousand points of light. No, sir. How much is a big can of Jim Beam? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. So here's the question. Yeah, what you got? How many steps do you take backwards per day? Uh, today, I feel like I've already done like a thousand, but I don't know, you just have to bump into something or fall, fall down. <laughs> Every now and then I'll run to a car. Have you been all over behind the beams before? Excuse me? Have you been on like one of our behind the beams before? Have you been here before? You look familiar. That's why. Uh, two years ago. Okay. Yeah. Well, my memory's not that good. <laughs> if it is, damn good to see you.
See, that's a rookie mistake, man. Around here, everybody knows you don't trust a word that comes out of Frank's mouth. <laughs> How was the warehouse, y'all? Very good. Good. So we probably shouldn't have believed that he said this is the this is the Rick house that they make pappies in. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like sustainability for the win, right? Like so much less water that we have to utilize to keep it. And it's beautiful. We Welcome to, to the FBN, y'all. And we are here. Whatever it is, I This is nice. Look at this place, huh? It's not a wall of bookers. Oh. Hold her back. Yeah. I've got probably most of those. <laughs> yeah. Nope, where'd he go? Welcome to the best part of the tour, which is the air conditioning. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. uh, welcome to the Fred Vino Distillery. Um, for all of y'all that are, uh, from what I understand, oh. some uh, bourbon connoisseurs, right? Yeah, you got scared that's when I was going to say. Yeah. That's a way nicer way yeah. than I've heard all day. Is that right? And I've heard yeah. geeks. Yeah. <laughs> bourbon geeks? It's better than a oh, It is, yeah. Well, then I like let me uh, let me push up my glasses, right? I'm, yeah. if, if you're a geek, I'm a geek, right? That's right. Um, no, y'all have probably heard that name, Fred B. No. Uh, Fred No is our current seventh generation master distiller of the James B. Distilling Company. However, this is not his space. Right? This really is his son's space. His son, Freddie No, has become over the last few years our eighth generation co master distiller alongside of his father. It's kind of the first point in time in our history where we've had a father and son team working kind of side by side with that. It's a really cool point uh, to kind of be at. Um, and Freddie, of course, is going to be the one that carries us into the future. And so this space, having uh, at least for us, what's a itty bitty, teeny tiny distillery uh, for us, right? Um, having this small scale innovation and experimental distillery, this is a way for him to be able to explore, to try out new things, to try things that may end up becoming so this is uh, like the little book lab? Kind of, right? So a lot of the liquids that might end up being utilized uh, for little books. So for example, chapter 8 that was just released a couple weeks ago. Um, some of the malted rye that's in there is stuff that could have been made here, right? Uh, we're now making that 100% malted rye mash bill. Another mash bill that is one of our more innovation-focused mash bills that we utilize is our American single malt mash bill. Um, so 100% malted barley. We also... Every now and then, have made what we call just simply our <coughs> high rye mash bill. And when I say our high rye mash bill, I don't mean our high rye bourbon mash bill. I mean our high rye rye mash bill. Okay. Picking up on it now. Like the yeah, ninety-five bookers, bucks. The bookers <laughs> rye. Bookers rye. No comment. Overhaul <laughs> <laughs> rye. I saw some of y'all do the same thing that everybody else does whenever, uh, whenever they walk in here, something like tugs at the gut, they're like, oh. And then they look and they laser focus right over there at that green wax, right? <laughs> 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 Sitting over there on the, on the show. Uh, no, I mean, that's a mask that we continue to play with. I have no clue what we're going to utilize it for, right? So don't hear me as saying anything that I'm trying to do between the lines, right? But, um, but what I would like to invite you to try is some high ride distillate. Uh, oh. Completely unrelated, right? Uh, so y'all are welcome to uh, grab a glass. Again, they're all like around. Thank you. This is I want to let you know. This is so we're happy now. Rye, rye whiskey match. So happy. We are team rye, by the way. So it's kind of. Oh. Team rye, we like rye. We're team, we're team rye. I love it. I call Thank myself you. a convert. Oh, are you? I know. I'm kind of. I'm kind of a convert. That's uh, that's rye. I don't know how I feel about that. Like it's. That's like, oh, yeah. Rye on rye. Smells like this, though. For sure. 
It smells like tequila. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, it does. It smells like tequila. I don't know about that. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely good. Whoa. <laughs> 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 what? What's the low? Oh, that's got a. Uh, Cecil's out on that. I, I don't know. Well, you know, if I, know. If, I, if I ate dandelions, that's the grass note I'm getting. Yeah, so this is what we would call one. She's out. <laughs> She's out. <laughs> I do not know, but it's probably the standard anywhere from the honestly. You're back? Well, I mean back to it. It's kinda weird. You keep going back to the well. And then whenever you're ready, you can follow me down. I'm gonna take you down to our basement bar. I have more work to put you through, I'm so sorry. Uh, we have we have two more products that I want y'all to explore. I want to hear your opinion. So. Is that mint in it? <laughs> it did have a mint note to it. Yeah, I do agree. Well, I mean, but it definitely needs a barrel. Going down. Well, I've been in the distillery. I haven't been in the home. changes throughout the decades, including the most recent of which, uh, we just relaunched it earlier this year. Um, have y'all seen new labels out in your local liquor stores? If you check it out, you say, what the hell is going on right there, right? Um, we did update the labels, uh, and I'll let y'all pass this around here in a second. Yeah. We did update the labels, um, but that is specifically because we actually changed the liquid expression of Jimmy Black. We updated the liquid a little bit. We wanted to elevate it a touch. Um, Jimmy Black was originally released at eight years of age. It was called Double Age because it was compared to our four-year Jim Beam original. The white label, best-selling bourbon in the entire world. As if it's me that did that. Um, but throughout the decades, demand shot up exponentially. Well before we knew how to play. So we expanded that batch size. We ended up taking that age statement off of the label, and we started saying, okay, we're gonna use a batch, and we're gonna throw in barrels that are maybe aged anywhere from six to eight years of age, right? Um, still delivered a delicious flavor profile. It still ended up winning the world's best bourbon in 2016 at the San Francisco Spears competition, right? Still good stuff. Um, but this is uh, this has been Fred and Freddie's uh, project as of late. They wanted to start scooping us back up before we put that original one. So for the first time in years, we have put back an age statement of seven years on Jim B. Black. And you're welcome to take a look at it, pass it around. There is a seal on it, so don't forget it. I'll know, I'll know. I know, I know. I know, right? Um, the one other thing that we did do Due to it, other than you know, increase the age statement on those patches, is we actually did move it from 86 proof to 90 proof, which I know four proof points. Well, it's you know, all experimental, uh, but I do think it's a nice little step. 90 proof is going to be a really great uh, kind of range for this product to really fully develop into what Booker intended it to be and what Fred and Freddie consider it to be. Freddie always calls this the Swiss Army knife of bourbon. It's one of the most flexible products that we make. It's delicious, sneak. It's amazing on the rocks, and it's a really, really great mixer for your well or or for your home bar, right? Um, it, it's a great thing to utilize in a multitude of different ways. I think Jimmy Black makes one of the best stand bourbon cooks. 
uh, in the horn. Right? Oh yeah. Uh, bourbon and ginger is all salad, right? But also, it's a delicious dip <laughs> horn, right? Wouldn't be my first choice. I have friends, thoughts, no. feelings, yeah. concerns, very sweet. smart remarks. Anybody? I love to hear. This is this is the ninety proof version. Yeah, this is the new version, the ninety proof seven. Oh, you need to you need to put out a cast strength of this. Oh. Would it be delicious? It was. We tried I know you just tried to barrel of it up there. I like that you pointed out the sweetness. I think this has a lot of that classic caramel sweetness. To me, if I were to describe ginger <laughs> in one word, I would call it classic. It is like twenty. It's too sweet word. for me. Honest with you. You're being honest, but that's why it's my profile. You're a cheap David. <laughs> now I have one thing, one more thing that I'm going to run by y'all. Um, the answer product. is yes. Freddie is interested to hear your all's thoughts uh, as he just released it not too long ago. This is going to be Little Book Chapter Eight coming around to you. <gasps> oh, wow. It better be good because we just bought it. <laughs> Little book chapter. Hope it doesn't stop. Hey, spoiler, spoiler alert. It's really good. Oh, okay, good, good. Yeah. I put the seven back to get spoiler, the eight. Spoiler alert, it's really good. Yeah, I've had it. Spoiler alert, it's really awesome. Oh, it's so yeah. Good. It's so good. I love what Freddie's doing. And it's funny. Little book, little book chapter eight. Yeah. Little book is a blended whiskey, meaning that there are multiple whiskeys that could be bottled and sold on their own that got blended together to create something entirely new. And that's the whole goal of it, is to layer all those flavors and develop complexity and create something greater than the sum of its parts, right? Um, Sounds but yes. this particular blend A good has uh, seven different liquid recipe. streams that goes into it. Seven different whiskeys, okay? Sounds that says good. only one of them is bourbon, okay? Oh, okay? Six of the seven whiskeys that went into this are rye whiskeys. They range anywhere from four-year-old rye to eleven-year-old rye. You bought. They go you across nostrils ranging from our Kentucky style rye, which is that just like barely fifty-one percent rye, all the way up to our Monongahela mash. How many of us have heard of that new A overhaul? There we go. What are your thoughts on that? I know. I'm gonna get it. Oh, you're gonna get it. Here we go. Let us know. Let us know. That A overhaul Monongahela mash is eighty percent rye, twenty percent malted barley. We have some of our 100% malted rock in this. We have some of our 80-10-10 recipe, 80% rye, 10% malted rye, 10% malted barley. So a true range of different rye mash levels across multiple years of age sentence. The bourbon that went into it was a high rye bourbon, so potentially it's a big rain It also just happens to be a 18-year-old batch of that high rye I want to hear Kenny say All of that got put together and bottled at 118.2 proof. 118.2 proof. Please enjoy, my friends. That smells good. Cheers. Don't eat that. It tastes better if you clink your glass. There's a few different ones. You pay. It's not the first one. Yeah. Still right, but good. Sweet. Solid. Biscuits, yeah. oily. Rum does not bite like a regular rum. Yeah. That smells so good. I don't get those grassy notes. This, this kind of orange water like in sock. Yeah. It helps you long as I'll see. Wow. Not to try and kiss up or anything, but this tastes like. Spend some time with this one. It's complex. It's got a lot to it. So. Tastes like the tropics. Is the Republic. Is it pleasant that one is to break down a little bit? My understanding is that. I'll tell you what, we're going to not hot at all. It's got like. In my opinion. It's not bad. You think? Typically, it's whenever. Uh, no. Typically, whenever. You know, I'd like her to taste this. I don't think she likes it. Oh, well, I don't know. Well, she well, she like, hates her hands. But she likes She's like, she likes she the hair. She likes the She likes the hair. She likes the Taste it, see if you taste the dill. Because I usually, I don't know where I have to have a different match, but I don't. I do actually. It's mint. It's just like a Chinese bean. It's like a pina colada. It's like it's got a pina colada. Yeah, I don't ever get used to it. Yeah, I said pineapple. Like, a lot of people do say that. I yeah. more it's a pina colada. Yeah. Yeah. Pineapple. Yeah. 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 I definitely get the strong apricot and orange marmalade that you kind of said. I don't get the pick you up. It's like you one. It's But I am going to check that. All right. So what do you think? I like this one. This is... Good thing I like it because we already bought it. I know. 
But honestly, I, was, I mean, I Wait, let's go we really savor our little book because we only have a couple. You can see them around. But I, for actually, be honest, I was like, I was like, and my bookers already. One of me didn't want to like little books because they didn't want to cover how I still that. I won't chase Dan, when he was talking about the rides, I didn't even like this at all. I can't. This doesn't taste like a ride. Are you, are you really, you're not really kind of like in a ride. Do I? Do you really, are, do you really like the rides? I mean, yes. I, I should know this. Yeah. All right. Our, but like, the ride's my favorite ride. It's your thing. Yeah. That's why I said. This kind of tastes like your ride. Like a ride. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, it's it's like a ride too. It's really like very... And, and I think I told you, I'm not, I don't really care for this. Yeah. yeah. But your rye and this rye, I yeah. can drink. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. Is it's kind of funny. I'm not a big rye fan, but I did pick up those, the, the rye at the whole shebang. Yeah. I really like that rye. So. Yeah, they picked the rye. I think it's this, just learning to kind of like rye. Cause, I mean, I did not like rye. Sorry. It's good. Just got... A couple drops of water. I'll tell you what, that makes the oily see. She owns Potterwood. Potterwood. Get the water. Potterwood water. Potterwood water. Potterwood water. I always see that. It's pretty good. It's still sick. Linda's going to get the bones. Oh, she's going to like it. I think it's better with drops of water. Yes, please. It's warm, but it doesn't bite like a regular rice. No, in fact, I, I kind of like putting water in it because it just took some of those sharp notes, the sharp grass notes to me off. It's definitely a rock. Like I said, oh, like I said, Linda's going to get to uh, blind this one. I think I'm going to have to buy a ball. Uh, I think that's what you did. That's great. That's what you did. That's what you did. That's what you did. That almost has a dusty smell. Dude, I got a dusty smell. A dusty smell? To me. To me. It smells like a brick house. Yeah. She does. Smells like that. Thank you, sweetheart. It smells like when you walk into the river house and you smell that angel Yeah. I'm trying to think if that's actually my favorite so far of all the time. Yeah. Well, good, because you bought it. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, this, the end rock is pretty good. Well, this and that uh, barrel strength. Well, I know what I was going to say. Seven. I think number one for me is probably this so far. Number two is the barrel strength. Jim Black, Jim Bean Black. Jack Black. Jack Black. <laughs> Jim Bean Black. Jim Bean Black. From the barrel. Not some, not, I'm, I'm, not out of the box. This, I mean, probably the mixer. I get that. Yeah. But if they had that in cast strength, I'd buy them. I agree with you. That one, I don't think I'm probably going to agree. For 20 bucks. Well, I mean, it's a fine mixer for 20 bucks. Yeah, I agree. Well, do you guys do any benchmarks? Oh. <laughs> yeah, that would be like full proof. What I took, I took a bottle of fat free. I dropped a three inch spiral charger in it. It's been sitting since the 20th of March. Oh, wow. It looks just like stag. It tastes just like stag. So, what are your thoughts? I think it's a home run. I absolutely love that. I mean, it's got, it, to me, it's like a pina colada nose, a ton of tropical food, a little bit of oak. I mean, it's like, it's perfectly balanced. I mean, that, Freddie did a great job with it. Oh, yeah. What do you think? I'm not a typical rye guy. Um, Don got your rye on our seven flight taste. Um, I got the bourbon, so I like the sweeter stuff. Yeah. Um, Straight, it wasn't bad. I, I kind of liked the, the overall taste of it. When I added some water, it, it came down to my palate more. Yeah. I think it broke, brought out more of the fruit to yeah, me. Yeah. So I liked it with bloomed a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, overall, and we bought the bottle, so it's, I'm hoping we like it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome.
there's a bunch more. Money is just there. Oops.